bang. Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and today we're going through a few knives that are built like bulldozers, starting it off with the Max Ace Hephaestus that's available right now. You can get one. People comment to me or con constantly get a hold of me asking me to sell it, asking me when it'll be available. Well, right now is your chance. Now, I will have it linked down in the description with a discount code, so make sure you use the discount code. Now, the Hephaestus, man. This thing is an absolute tank. Not only is every bit of it just thick, overbuilt robustness, it actually has three locking mechanisms. Three. So one, you have the frame lock, which is a very thick, robust frame lock with a steel lock bar insert. So you have the strength of the titanium, the hardness of the steel lock bar insert, and then you have this little key um, whatever you want to call it, you spin and that prevents the frame lock from disengaging. So if you did put it under serious pressure, this will prevent the, the lock from unlocking. Now you have to re-spin it in order to unlock it because once you spin it, like I said, it stops the, the frame lock from unlocking. So you can't manually unlock it unless if you spin that. Now with a disengage, you can just open and close it all you want but once it's engaged, it's gonna lock that frame lock in place. Then the third one is a 195 thousandths hardened steel pin that goes through the titanium and through the blade, making it basically a fixed blade. Um, it, it's impossible to fail after that, so it makes it to where in order to fail it, you would have to sever a, basically a 200 thousandths steel, hardened steel pin and fail the, the frame lock and the lock that's holding the frame lock. So all in all, man, I can't imagine how much weight this thing can actually hold. Um, everything about it is built big. Um, even the blade, like, cause a lot of times when a knife fails, especially with locks this strong, the, the, the locks don't fail. It's the blade that snaps. However, this is a super thick blade. So this thing is built for hard use. We have a 233 thousandths thick blade stock. So very robust, but it actually gets down to a decently slicey edge with this beautiful clip point um, semi recurved blade. It actually cuts pretty decent. Um, the action is really good, especially for such a big knife. You have a nice big flipper tab, huge stop pin, by the way, full titanium backspacer, giant hardware through and through, titanium mill pocket clip. Yeah, this whole thing, even the construction of the scales, the way it's put together, you have one, two, three, four, four big T8 um, pins holding everything together from the two scales and the, the, the giant thick titanium backspacer. It's heavy, it's big. Um, it also comes with all new hardware. So, you know, if anything happens, even your steel lock bar insert, there's a new steel lock bar insert. So if something happens with that, you know, from you really putting pressure on it, they give you all new hardware just in case. So, like I said, that will be linked down in the description um, with the discount code, the Max Ace Hephaestus. It is badassery all the way around. Now the next one, the next one is a new knife that also comes with a pin. It also has a pin similar to the Hephaestus. And that is the Artisan Proponent now in a frag pattern. So we have an S35 VN semi mirrored blade. The fuller is actually mirrored on this. Um, you can see the reflection on it. it. It is beautiful, a beautiful blade, but it's a flipper and thumb stud knife. And then the frame lock is super thick, nice and robust, uh, full titanium, steel lock bar insert. But if you're gonna hard use it, you do have it and it's on a lanyard so you can uh, carry it with it or you could tie it around it, you can do whatever. But this is another pin so you can put it in when you're gonna do some serious hard use and you don't have to worry about destroying your lock bar uh, because it doesn't even need to be locked. Yeah, if you disengage it, you'll feel a little bit of movement with that pin. Let me see, let me just retighten it all the way. 
It, it's pretty secure though, but basically all the pressure is just going to go right onto the pin and the titanium. So it just reinforces the lock, making it extremely, extremely tough, making it extremely, extremely strong. These scales are not milled out by the way, which does make it even more stronger. The stop pin is a giant stop pin. Love to see the size of that. Nice big overbuilt thumb studs. Fantastic detent. This thing has a nice strong detent, or at least mine does. You can actually hear my detent. It's very clicky and just everything about it's overbuilt. Even the clip, <clears throat> and the clip actually is, is a decent clip. It's got plenty of spring. It's big enough to hold, you know, a tank like this. Now these do come in a lot of different versions. If you don't have the money for the titanium version, there are liner lock versions. There, there's brass versions. I'm not sure which ones are all available. I do know this one's available right now, but there are budget ones as well. So if that's um, a little bit out of your price range, <clears throat> you can always go with that. But like I said, it will be linked down in the description along with all the affordable ones and everything. Next, next is a knife that I actually have to get back to somebody, and that is, and it is the Medford TFF, the Tactical Fighting Folder. This thing is an absolute monster. These are available, everything from this video is available. Super good action. This thing is so smooth. It is riding on washers. You would think it was bearings, how smooth it is. And this is a new one. So, you know, they're, they're doing a really good job with their tolerances and just their smoothness now. Um, you know, in the beginning, these things, you know, not saying this exact model, but like in the beginning with Medford, a lot of them, and you almost had a two hand to open right away. This is built very well. I love the finish, love the satin finish. I put a um, a little bit of a lower angle than what, what it did have on it. It's about 18 degrees per side. And it uh, I put a medium grid edge on it because it's a night, it's a S9DV. S9DV does a really good job with coarse to medium grit. You can get by with a polished edge, but it will hold a medium grit edge a lot better. Um, it has a nice big clip similar to the proponent just a minute ago where it's literally built for a big knife. Nice big standoffs, huge hardware, titanium frame lock, 100% USA made. Um, an absolute beast. You feel like you could fight with this thing and that's the point of it, right? It's a tactical fighting folder. It, it's made for, I guess you could say combat and just hard use. The stock thickness and how big and robust the blade is. Yes, it'll slice just fine. Yes, it'll poke just fine. But you can just feel that this thing is built to live a long, long time. This is something that you feel like would make it through an apocalypse. It is big, it's beautiful, and it is absolute badassery at its finest. Now, let's get to the next one. Now, I did want to go through one more Medford, which is the USMC Fighter, um, or sorry, yeah, the USMC Flipper, sorry, the USMC Flipper, which is a manual version because they do have a fixed blade version of this. It's basically a, it pays homage to the K-Bar, and you can see that with the, with the blade and the handle, it looks kind of like the leather wrapped handle of a K-Bar. Um, Mine is S35VN, it does come in other blades. Nice deep hollow ground drop point blade. Um, again, it is just built super, super tough. You know, it has a little spot back there for bashing, which is a titanium plate. Everything is overbuilt on it once again. Even the stop pin is gigantic. Um, the lockup is rock solid. You just, you feel super secure with a knife like this. I have hard used this and it is extremely, extremely tough. There's all different types of versions. Every single one of these Medfords, Medfords are, are handmade and they're customs. So they tend to have a lot of different patterns and versions and colors. Now, next, <clears throat> Cold Steel. Obviously, cold steel, I mean, I, I think it's, you know, without saying, cold steel is just, it's probably the toughest knife you could buy as far as without secondary locking systems and everything. Just the one lock, which is the triad lock, it's made to be hard used. This is a knife you can absolutely baton with, you can chop with, you can do just about anything you wanna do hard use with a knife with a triad lock. Now there's all different versions. They have tons of options with the triad lock. This is the 4MAX Scout. So 
you know, it's a big knife for sure. It almost feels like a small folding machete and it actually has a place so you could put a pin in there. They just don't send you a pin. So that is something you could figure out for yourself if you wanted to in the future. Um, also the 8010, they have a little bit more compact or should I say a lot more compact as you can see. Um, but the 8010, again, super robust. One of the most comfortable knives in the hand that you can buy. It does come with a hollow ground uh, Tonto now, which I'm actually upset about because that's what I ordered when I got this one, but they sent me the drop point which I've had before and I hadn't had the Tonto, so I wanted the Tonto. I do have original GOAT full titanium scales on this. I'm not sure if they have any available right now, but they will have some aluminum and titanium scales available at some point for them, if they're, if they're not available right now. Um, they have tons of other options available, so definitely check out the link for original GOAT down in the description and use the discount code for 15% off. Uh, but yeah, man, cold steel, we already know, like maybe if you don't know and you're just joining the knife community and just finding out about knives for the first time, you might not know, but cold steels, it, they are known. They have a cult-like following for being just absolute tanks, man. These knives, you don't realize how incredibly strong a knife can get until you try a triad lock because they don't, they don't give an inch. Like at, even after hard using long-term, they're just as solid as they were when you started. Um, you have the SR1 Lite, which is gonna be a more affordable option. And again, this thing, you could pry with this thing. The blade is basically built like a pry bar. Uh, I would say the other two are gonna cut a lot better than this, but this is still, comes with a nice sharp edge. It'll still cut just fine. Um, but the, the blade is just so thick and robust and the handle is just, you know, you can, you can kind of just feel it. You know, it's built for poking, stabbing, prying, chopping, batoning. Um, with the triad lock, you know it's going to be, you know, built extremely strong. It does have thumb stud action. And pretty much every triad lock you can operate with one hand, which is another really, really cool thing. They do have a ton of other knives that are a little bit more EDC friendly, a little bit more slicier that also carry the triad lock. Now, one more. Now this is a more of an EDC, EDC friendly knife. Um, you know, I could pull out a couple more, but the Spyderco Shaman. Um, I wanted to put it on the list because I think this is a great representation of maybe not a knife built like a bulldozer. So it's not built like a bulldozer. However, it has the amount of strength and cutting performance to that it makes it a great universal knife, a great knife that's just gonna be an all around fantastic tool. It has that great leaf shaped blade that's super useful for EDC, good for utility cuts, good for slicing. It comes with the compression lock, which is a very strong locking system. Nowhere near as strong as the triad lock, but it's still, it, it's a locking system that, that's been known to last a long time it, through you know heavy use, and it locks up every time really, really well. Um, the hole deployment makes it really easy for use with gloves and things like that. And then the handle is, is extremely, extremely comfortable. One of the most comfortable spider coats you can get. Now the blade is a little bit more on the robust side compared to some of the other spider coats, but because it's a full flat grind, it's going to slice extremely, extremely well. The spider coat shaman can't recommend it enough. And any with any spider coat, man, there, there you have so many aftermarket parts you can make them your own. Tons of tons of options. Now, really quickly. The SOCOM Elite. Now there are some of these available with serrations, this exact version, well, the black version. So you know, there are they are technically available, but I don't I can't find any plain edge ones at the moment unless if you go with the full titanium one that's made by Reich, which is one not made hundred not made in the USA. Um, Reich do, does make knives overseas, so Microtech worked with Reich and made um, a full titanium version of the SOCOM. Which is pretty awesome. You know, I do think um, they are built very well. I have tried them. They, they, they feel like tanks. They feel like they're super tough. The, the blade is a lot more, even more robust than the actual SOCOM. <clears throat> the one beautiful thing about the actual SOCOM is that it has a super thick blade stock, but it gets down to like 15 thousandths behind the edge. So it actually cuts fairly well. Beautiful sharpening choil, titanium liner lock, aluminum handles. It has a glass breaker on the back. And 
I've seen these things hard used over and over. I've hard used this one and it just, man, they are just built extremely tough. It, they are a real folding tactical knife. And then one other one, the Demco AD 20.5. Now, the AD 20, I'd love to recommend, but I don't know anywhere right now that you can buy an AD 20, but 80 20.5s are readily available. You can get these and they are made with the shark lock. Now the shark lock is supposedly just as strong as a triad lock. However, I personally don't think that they could last as long through serious hard use. However, I could be wrong. Um, you know, I'd love to see the test. Maybe I should do the test myself, but either way, it makes something as strong as the triad lock even more fidgety. So you can operate it much easier. It, it has this, this very cool, unique sound, this clickety clackiness that, that's just very addicting. Um, the engagement of the lock, you can really feel it when it engages. Now mine has been fully customized. I have original GOAT titanium scales, link down in the description, and a new blade with a super deep hollow grind of magnet cut steel. Um, but they do have a whole bunch of other options that you can get that are just, you know, that are, um, that are stock, you could say, and they have some more coming. Um, they have some slicers coming with some beautiful drop point, spear pointish blades that I'm actually thinking about getting one because I would love, even though mine already is a spear point blade, um, I'd love to get one of those as well and see how they are compared to the original ones because I did think the original ones, while it has a strong lock, the geometry was a little bit too thick and I kind of understand it because it's supposed to be a super tough knife, but it limited the cutting performance and it made it to where every time you sharpen it, it gets a lot, lot thicker behind the edge. So, you know, that is something to think about when getting one, um, especially one with the sheep's foot is that they, they are a little bit more on the robust side, but you know, that's kind of what they're made for, right? So anyways, there you guys go. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.